My name is Willy Klecker. I'm a farmer, but uh, also a senior lecturer in criminal justice at UNISA, where I've been uh, involved in doing research on stock theft since uh, the early 2000s. And uh, we are trying to establish ways how to curb stock theft by looking at data and uh, looking at the ground level data to discern possible patterns that we can distinguish and then to alert people as to what we have found. The main thing is, is how we can uh, go start with if we know the patterns is because it allows us to focus on the hotspots that is determined in the country uh, so that we don't focus unnecessary on the un un unnecessary objects and so forth. So what we do is, is uh, we identify the um, Hotspots in South Africa. Currently, I'm showing you the 30 hotspots in South Africa, and it's quite discernible that there is three very observable clusters when we get to the 30 hotspot stations in the country. The first is the is the big block in, in Eastern Cape. Then we have the block in KZN. And then we have the little bit between KZN and the Free State. And then we have the spot above Pretoria, uh, all the way to Grobesdal area. That is currently our hotspot areas, and we have two outliers in Tahung and in, in Mafia King. So we do these as to see where do the stock thieves actually focus on. But we also uh, do this not only on on a level on this level. We also look at at um, on a full scale level where we identify the top five or six hotspot stations in every province. And when you look at this current chart, you will see that we have the same tendency as we had in the previous one when we get to the hotspot stations. With the block in the Eastern Cape, we have the block in the KZN, but then we have a discernible pattern between the Northern Cape and the Western Cape. All the way up from Uppington, you have a line going through, through Victoria West, et cetera, going down to George. So that is the discernible patterns. That's, this is how we then this, uh, determine how the perpetrators operate within the country when it gets to stock theft. Uh, when we get to interprovincial stock theft, as I've done research on borders and the effect of borders on livestock theft, and it's quite obvious that borders always play a big part within livestock theft. If you look at the whole area in uh, India, for instance, between the Muslim and the Hindu area. You look in Africa and you look at the Uganda, Kenya and South Sudan, you look at that borders there. You look in South Africa where we have, we're bordering six different countries and we also have the, the sea. Uh, and all these border lines are determined by different means. Some are determined by mountains, some by rivers, some by straight lines, uh, some by religion, etc. And what we have determined over the years is that uh, these borders are utilized by perpetrators to determine where they're going to steal and not to steal. Uh, because they do know where the units and stock fifth units are, where the police is operating, et cetera, et cetera. And then they will focus on particular areas. If you look at, for instance, between um, South Africa and Lesotho, you look at the Eastern Cape part, Quite prevalent. You look at KZN. There's a lot, a lot of prevalence between of stock theft between KZN and Lesotho. But then also, if you look at the different um, provinces in South Africa, one that we just picked up that's quite discernible is the between the western and the east and the western and the northern Cape, where we have a little bit of a problem in the area of Victoria West, Marysburg, and Balfour West. So what we do know of that area is we have very pertinent main roads going through there. Uh, we have the N1 going through, and then we have the N12 going down from Kimberley all the way down to um, Victoria West. So those are discernible patterns. It's also mountainous terrain, it's Karoo. And if we go back into the history, we also did found that that is a cluster of where it's a problem within stock theft and where the stock theft unit actually focuses very, very well how to curb this problem in that area. But we have a lot of these in South Africa that we can identify. But I think that is the main one that uh, we can give uh, to people at the present moment.
giving some tips is a lecture on its own. But the first point is to be your own guardian and not to expect of anyone else to be the guardian of your livestock. Mark your animals. See that you patrol your 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 farm and your farms every day, that you are observable, that you leave tracks where you were and where you weren't. And I think the most important thing is not to have a routine. Don't establish a routine that offenders and perpetrators can find out what your routine is, uh, because that is very discernible for them and to determine where are they going to steal and where are they not going to steal. And the last thing is to remember that stock theft is a crime that's committed at night. It's normal. It's not a crime that's normally committed in daylight. And those are the most basic things to remember on the prevention of stock theft. Thank you to all the viewers and thank you for listening to us. Thank you.